what I learned growing up in my continuums, and then what I found out when I went back into my practice, and what I looked at was actual reality, uh, some of those things were stark differences. So um, we set out to make this continuum easy to understand and more importantly, practical, right? Because that's the whole thing. Like, do these guys and girls really do what they're saying they do from the front of the room? And uh, I can tell you that we, we, not only do we just talk the talk, we walk the walk. This is actually, we, we're teaching you what we do in our practice, okay? So what is occlusion, right? Here we are like this weekend, gonna spend two days together, time away from your friends, family, your practices, personal life, all to learn about occlusion. What is occlusion? <clears throat> so occlusion is really the position and the relationship of the mandible and the maxilla when the jaws closed and the teeth are together in contact. And this position may not coincide with centric occlusion. It's like, what? What did they just say? What is that GPT for? What, is, what does that mean? You know, this weekend, we're gonna talk about several terms, initials, and we're not doing it to confuse you. Uh, we're doing it just because this, would, this is what exists in dentistry. So when we use a term CR, that is referencing to centric relation. When we use the term CO, which by the way, I feel is the most misused term in dentistry. CO stands for centric occlusion, and I'm gonna, I'll define these. And then we have MI or MIP or habitual bite. That's maximum intercuspation, okay? It's kind of like the end of the crash. And lastly, we could talk about NM or neuromuscular dental position, because that, sometimes that's viable, okay? So these are, these are some of the terminologies that you're going to hear consistently throughout this weekend. So, what determines occlusion? You know, when I went through camps, I was told like all of this conglomerate of things determine occlusion. And really what it boils down to is there's three things that determine occlusion. The first is the temporomandibular joint. And I will, I will explain these further. The second determinant of occlusion is how your bottom teeth meet up with your top teeth. That is the second determinant of occlusion. And finally, the last determinant of occlusion is the periodontal apparatus or the interface with the tooth and the bone, okay? Those are your three determinants of occlusion.